Hello everyone. In this presentation, we'll learn important things regarding lateral wall of nose and pharynx. Starting with the lateral wall of nose, the important things that you have to keep in mind regarding lateral wall of nose is the turbinates or the concha. So they are superior concha, middle concha and inferior concha. The superior concha is the smallest whereas the inferior concha is the largest out of all the three concha or turbinates. This concha overlies the meatus. So the space beneath this concha is called as meatus. They are superior, middle and inferior meatus. Out of all, the inferior meatus is the largest. So the structures that drains into these meatus is very important. So here you can see starting with spinoidal air sinus. So spinoidal sinus drains into spinoethmoidal recess. So spinoidal sinus drains into spinoethmoidal recess. Whereas the posterior ethmoidal air sinuses. So ethmoidal sinus is divided into anterior, middle and posterior. Posterior ethmoidal air sinus drains into superior meatus. Whereas anterior, middle, maxillary sinus and frontal sinus drains into middle meatus. Here you need to understand an important thing. Middle meatus is divided, in, divided into two. That is the structures that drains into bulla ethmoidalis and the structures that drain into hiatus semilinaris. So bulla ethmoidalis is a rounded elevation on which only middle ethmoidal air sinus drains into. Whereas hiatus semilunaris is a semilunar sulcus into which maxillary sinus, anterior ethmoidal sinus and frontal sinus drain into. Whereas the structure that drains into inferior meatus is nasolacrimal duct. So nasolacrimal duct drains into inferior meatus. So this nasolacrimal duct is guarded by valvaf hasner. So it is guarded by valvaf hasner at inferior meatus. So there is something called as Kieselbach plexus, also called as epistaxis area. So it is the area where it is a common site of bleeding in the lateral wall of nose. So it is this area is located at anterior inferior part of the nasal septum and the arteries that are associated with Kieselbach's plexus are spinopalatine artery, anterior ethmoidal artery, greater palatine artery and septal branch of superior labial artery. So these are the arteries that are associated with epistaxis area or also called as Kieselbach's area or Kieselbach's triangle. Moving on to pharynx. So pharynx is divided into three parts. The nasal part that is nasopharynx also called as epipharynx which extends from the base of the skull to soft palate as you can see in the diagram. The oral part that is oropharynx which extends from hard palate to hyoid bone. The laryngeal part, also called as laryngopharynx or hypopharynx, which extends from upper border of epiglottis to lower border of cricot cartilage. So the pyriform fossa, which is also called as smuggler's pouch or smuggler's fossa, is located in the laryngopharynx. This slide shows you the weak spot between the muscles of pharynx. The main one is Killian's dehiscence. So Killian's dehiscence is the weakest area of pharynx which is located between oblique thyropharynges and longitudinal cricopharynges. So the Killian's dehiscence is present between thyropharynges and cricopharynges. Whereas there is another weak spot that is Lamer's dehiscence which is located between cricopharynges and longitudinal muscle of esophagus. So what is the clinical significance of these weak spots? So if the muscles that is cricopharynges and thyropharynges doesn't relax, what happens is the food that we eat escapes through this weakest area to form a pharyngeal pouch. So Killian's dehiscence is important clinically because it is the weakest area which leads to the formation of pharyngeal pouch also called as Zenker's diverticulum. And the muscles involved are once again it is thyropharynges and cricopharynges. The structures passing between the constrictors of pharynx is also important. Here you can see the gaps. The numbers are denoted with the gaps 1, 2, 3 and 4. 
so the first gap is between the base of the skull and superior constrictor also called as sinus of morgagni and these are the structures passing through this gap 1 whereas the gap 2 is between superior constrictor and middle constrictor the gap 3 is between middle and inferior constrictor whereas the last gap is between inferior constrictor and esophagus these are the structures that are passing between the constrictors remember middle constrictor is considered to be a fan shaped in muscles of pharynx there is one more term called passivens ridge so passivens ridge is important clinically because the synergistic effect of passivens ridge L along with the soft palate makes the food enter into oropharynx instead of nasopharynx so passivens ridge is formed with the help of palatopharynges so the muscle responsible or the muscle which forms most of the part of passivens ridge is palatopharynges there is some lymphatic chain in the pharynx which is important that is denoted as waldeyer's lymphatic ring so waldeyer's lymphatic ring consists of four types of tonsils that is pharyngeal tonsil also called as adenoid tonsil tubal tonsil palatine tonsil and lingual tonsil so this is the waldeyer's chain of lymphatic chain which consists of four tonsils pharyngeal tubal palatine and lingual tonsil Thank you all. That's all with the video. For more information, please do call to the helpline number.